franchise is a great first business. Um, you know, and for some people, they do it lifelong, right? It's a great business in and of itself. That's why they're able to franchise and be successful at it. Um, but for me, it was a great first business because it was like a business with training wheels, right? It's a business in a box. You have processes, you have systems, you have a product, right? And it's all been vetted through experience of other people. And you just go in and you have to implement it, implement it in your local market. So for me, it was a great first business that way. You know, I was young, I was inexperienced as an entrepreneur. And, and I had an instant support network and people that I could call on and ask questions. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, it just takes hard work other than that. You know, I think maybe I'm like some other people where I kind of thought I was going to come out of the gate being the golden child and, and knock it out of the park. But man, we lost some money in those first couple of years and it was painful. Um, and, and it's funny, it's the paradox of entrepreneurship, especially starting out, um, lost more money than I've ever lost, but um, I was having more fun than I've ever had. Uh, and it was, it was way, way more enjoyable um, than what I was doing previous. So it, it, it was the paradox. And that's really what got me through it, right? Is I enjoyed it. And um, if it was strictly money driven, I probably would have thrown in the towel, but because I loved it, we, we made it through on the other end to where we started becoming profitable and, and, uh, and made up, of course, for all of our losses and, and way more. Yeah, that's helpful. I, I would think too, you know, watching your grandpa have a, a boat company or a boat club and then uh, or a boat dealership, or at least being in the space, right? So that you're, you're comfortable with it. Um, just because I, you know, I'm comfortable like being on a boat, but I, you know, wouldn't necessarily know all the ins and outs. And so I'm sure there are a lot of things you had to figure out as you went about. I love that you said franchises are kind of a business for training wheels. It was a nice transition. Um, that was five years ago. You've had a lot of change since. So maybe kind of bring us up to speed on your, on your latest acquisition, why you decided to, to leave, you know, Freedom Boat Club in the hands of someone else, move across the country and move on to the next step. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> we, we hired a general manager for Freedom Boat Club. It grew, um, it, you know, I kind of, um, uh, it continued to grow, so I continued to hire more people until eventually I worked myself out of a job there. I hired a general manager, and then I wasn't really doing much. So, um, <clears throat> and it was also around the same time that we felt like it would be a good time for us to move back to Utah to get closer to family. Um, and that was more of a family-centered decision for us is to come back out here. And knowing that I didn't have much to do with my company and that I would be bored being, you know, all the way across the country from it. Um, I couldn't even go into the office and just chat with people and waste their time to waste my time. But so <clears throat> I got a couple of buddies from college, uh, that have become successful and have different skill sets. And we thought it'd be a cool idea to start a micro private equity firm that specializes in acquiring, uh, blue collar companies. So we kind of put our minds together and we found our first deal. And that was a water softener company in Park City. And um, so we made that acquisition. We closed on it six months ago. And we can talk about that a little bit. There was just a lot of opportunities that we saw. And we thought it was, um, there was a lot of upside. So we, we, we went for it and got our, you know, SBA loan and, now we're, now we're running again and having fun. 